Morning, so I'm going to do the day in the life of an MP and uh, it's Monday, so uh, Monday's definitely my longest day. Uh, Parliament um, doesn't sit until 2.30, 2 uh, that's to allow all the MPs to get down from all over the, all over the country. So I catch my train, depending on what I've got on, somewhere between 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I'll be doing videos throughout the day. But, uh, first thing I do is uh, jump on the treadmill and uh, do a little run. Uh, there's a gym down in the hotel, so uh, I'm quite fortunate I get to, I get to get to do that on the days that I'm down in London. And uh, we've got a treadmill at home or I, I tend to go out for a run. So uh, I'll see you later on in the day as the, as the day progresses. So I've just landed in London. Uh, been doing this now for two years and I still get a buzz when I get off, uh, when I get off the train. It's a fantastic place. So I'm just gonna catch the tube and then uh, I'll walk you into Parliament. Catch you later. So, just got into Westminster. See, uh, Big Ben, looking good. But if you ever do come to visit me down here, this is the way that you'll that you'll come. You come through Port Cullis House. So, uh, I'll just switch it off while I get through, and then I'll show you Port Cullis House. So this is Portcullis House, I'll just spin the camera around so you can see it. Fantastic place. And uh, a lot of new offices here, a lot of the committee rooms are here. Obviously there's a couple of restaurants here as well, but it's a, it's a meeting place for, for most MPs. If people come to see them, then they, they always tend to meet them here, then maybe take them through to the offices if they need to. But uh, no, it's a grand place. Really quite impressive, isn't it? Now we're in the old part. It's a fantastic building, isn't it? Just gonna run. And drop my suitcase off into the members' cloak room and then I'll uh, walk you up to my office. So I'm off there. Pick the order paper up. I'll give you a brief show of that later. But uh, lots of committee rooms along this corridor. I'm on the, uh, the second floor right at the top and then uh, right at the far end. It's uh, not a very big office, but it's mine and it's got a decent view, so uh, it'll do for me for now. I spend a lot of time in the library because the office is small and uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, show you inside there later on this afternoon. I'll catch you in a minute. So, almost there now. Just show you this, still always makes me smile. There you go, Nick Fletcher MP. Now let's have a look inside this office. So there we go folks, managed to get in today. That's the view I talk about. It's a fantastic view isn't it? Look at that, that really is something. It would be nice to look over the Thames, but that is definitely something else. That's the Lords there. So uh, anyway, I'll uh, just show you the order paper for today. So uh, prayers at 2.30, there's prayers every day. And then we've got uh, questions for DWP. And then uh, later on the main business is Social Security and Pensions. And to do this more for down there's an adjournment debate um an adjournment debate today support for the dentist and doing nhs backlogs that's a colleague of mine andy carter who's put that in so uh, depending on where i am i might actually pop in and uh, listen to what he's got to say on that it's obviously uh, quite an important issue for for lots of people okay right i'll catch you shortly thank you so I'm in the library, I spend quite a lot of my time in here. It's a fantastic place when the office is so small as mine. It is, it is nice to get spread out quite a bit in here. It's a fantastic uh, 
It's a fantastic place to be. I'll just give you a quick look. And it does look out over the Thames too. It's truly wonderful. I'm reading this moment on the lovely nook document that came out last week. I've just managed to get hold of a full paper copy. I've been over the brief earlier over the weekend, but I just want to read these bits to you. It says, what are the factors that will help drive leveling up? And it comes up with six capitals. Physical capital, human capital, intangible capital, financial capital, social capital, and institutional capital. And there's a paragraph here that uh, I just want to read here. I think it's absolutely fantastic and it's what I've been saying all the time. Places with rich endowments of all six capital benefits from the virtuous circle of agglomeration. They are home to skilled people with high quality jobs and have access to outstanding schools and globally competitive universities. They have good roads, trains and fast internet. Residents live in fine housing. Funding is available for local businesses to invest and innovate and communities are bound together by good relationships and a strong sense of belonging. Local leaders are able to build on these foundations to deliver improvements for their local community. That is a fantastic paragraph and that's what I want for Doncaster. So I'm just about to go into the chamber. The speaker's about to come through for prayers. Uh, Anna Firth has been introduced to Parliament, so it's a real, real nice uh, privilege to be part of this today. Anna Firth, the new MP for Southend. So I've come over to the House of Lords. Google are running an event here today, and uh, one of my constituents, a little girl, has done a drawing and she's won. So I've come to collect uh, a copy of a painting and see what all this is about today. I think it's going to be a fantastic event. Well, that was a great event. It's fantastic when one of your constituents uh, wins a competition. Uh, and uh, that competition was regarding online and offline balance. And I think that's really important. I think it's a lesson we all need to learn how much time we spend on our devices. Uh, but um, Lorna won and they did a A3 copy of her painting. And so I will make sure that uh, that gets, uh, gets out to us all. So, well done, Lorna. As for me, I've got to go back to the chamber now. There's an urgent question. And I want to go into the chamber and listen to what uh, ministers have got to say. Maybe ask a few questions myself too. So. so I'm in members' lobby now. I've just come out of the urgent questions. And uh, I've got to make some few phone calls regarding some constituency issues. But I'll just give you a quick look of uh, members' lobby. It's a fairly impressive uh, building. But, uh, I've got to i to get on with some phone calls, so I'll uh, speak to you all again later. So this is the central lobby, which I've just walked out of now. I've just had to do some phone calls regarding constituency issues. So uh, I'm going to go back to the library now, and carry on with a little bit of work regarding the levelling up document and uh, try and get some letters out and some uh, social media out and uh, do all I can to uh, to promote Don Valley. So I will uh, catch you later. I know we'll be voting later, so it's going to be another a long evening. But um, that's what we're here to do. So there you have it, the debate's finished, the minister's just sat down and uh, the green bell's ringing. So uh, I've got to go and vote, so that's what I will, uh, I will go and do. I'll uh, just quickly show you the, the bell on the screen, so if I can just show you that. There you go, and now I've got uh, 10, minutes to, 10 minutes to go and vote, so uh, I will catch you later. Well that's it, the house is uh, rose for the evening, it's uh, around about 9.30. Spent the last couple of hours in there and the debate regarding the Northern Ireland Protocol and the Laws Amendments. I would suggest 
if anybody is interested in that, and uh, they do go to Parliament TV and listen to it. It was uh, an extremely intense debate, um, fascinating, interesting, and uh, something that we need to uh, definitely get a, a hold of. Was then uh, followed by the German debate after the main uh, business of the House has been completed. MPs, uh, about MPs like myself, get the opportunity to do the German debate. And my good friend Andy Carter did that on dentistry. Now I have been contacted quite a few times by dentists myself, and so I managed to intervene on that and get my point across, so that was good. But, uh, I'll put a clip of that on along with the video. But i um, just got to walk the many steps back to my office now, but I will. Uh, I will catch you before I sign off completely. And I suspect my honourable friend too on the front bench wants to see changes made to the dentist contract. Can I have give way? I'd be very happy to give way, yes. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, a dentist in my constituent, and then uh, Matt Hooper, has contacted me several times on this matter. And he says that m the morale in dentistry is extremely low at this moment in time, specifically due to these contracts that you're discussing there at this moment. And uh, does he agree with me that we really do need to value our dentists? Because, as I say, when most of us are going about our day-to-day -day business, we don't think twice about our dentists. But as soon as we get that toothache, all of a sudden they become our best friend, and we need to make sure that they are there for us. I thank my little friend for that intervention. Before uh, I sign off, I just do want to uh, show you a little bit of uh, Westminster Hall. It's a fantastic building. Really is something, uh, something special. So I'm just going to spin this around now and show you this. Really, is fantastic. Really, is quite an impressive place, isn't it? Fortunately, there's lots of scaffolding everywhere. I've been to have spent all my life around scaffolding, and I've come down to Parliament, and it seems to have followed me down. But uh, it really is. Uh, fantastic fantastic place that's the, uh, the staircase that we all stood round in 2019 when i first elected there with along with all the other uh, new conservative mps so i have a photo of that somewhere i'll catch you again shortly well that's it done another another day over it's been uh, quite long. Uh, Mondays can be uh, quite a bit longer than this so in all fairness we have finished quite early so shouldn't be complaining. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed doing it. It's been a little bit difficult sometimes getting the camera out at the right time but uh, I hope you've got some kind of idea of what, uh, of what we're doing down here and what a day looks like. So I'm going to go and check into my hotel now and it starts all again tomorrow morning. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. For my constituents, I do just want to thank you for voting for me and putting me here. The long days, but well, they are great days and it's an honour to serve. And uh, I hope you put me here again. So uh, good night. I hope you have a great week.